Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about network appliances. Once again, at the end of 2019, I said that I'd spend a lot of 2020 talking about network peripheral devices. I spent a lot of time talking about network attached storage, but let's face it, interfacing with it isn't that straightforward. There's lots of adapters and switches and modems and routers all in between. So this year, I'm going to try and focus on as many of those as possible. Not just the top tier ones like your Cisco and your Netgear. I'm going to go all the way down to look at some of the more either affordable solutions or off-menu solutions that get recommended by IT professionals. And one of them that got recommended by several of you was Level 1. Now, Level 1 is a brand that kind of produces solutions that are out there to compete with the likes of Cisco and kind of back-end enterprise solutions. They do arrive at a more affordable price, and they've managed to send one here for me today at relatively short notice, I've got to say, quite impressive. Um, this is the GTP-2881. It's the second Level 1 device that we featured here on the channel and with that other device being a lot more small scale there's like a four or five port poe switch today we are looking at very much the other end of the seesaw we are looking at a 28 port poe 10 gbe enabled switch there's a lot in that sentence i mean straight off the bat before any of you stick around any longer than you need to this is an L3 light switch. That's kind of like L2 plus, if you will. So it's got all of that protocol with regard to the IPs and a modicum of uh, Mac virtual LAN support, which I'll talk about later on. But this is an L3 light switch. So if you're looking for something in that higher Mac and IP addressing protocol, then you might want to look elsewhere. But continuing, this switch retails for about, and I know this is vague, about 800 to a thousand pounds that's not just because of that but also because in different areas of the world availability is very all over the shop so if depending on where you are in the world you might get a real bargain here but again look at around 800 to a grand it's got 24 rj45 lan ports that are one gigabit ethernet each and it's also got four 10 gbe sfp plus ports now Another thing we should address very early on is this is not a PoE Plus switch. Standard PoE, and it supports up to 185 watts across the whole device. That's only the RJ45, not the SFP. It doesn't have that kind of protocol. And each port can have up to a maximum 30 watts. But obviously, 28 times 30 is not 185. So it's worth mentioning that each of those ports, you shouldn't really be drawing more than about 10 to 15 watts, and even then you're still not going to cover them all. But given that modern IP cameras utilize about 15 watts for the most part, apart from the very, very, very top-end access ones, as well as IP phones taking 5 to 10 watts, IP speakers, very flexible if you're going to use them for you know, high-end stuff, probably a lot more draw, but typical alarm systems, you're looking at about 5 to 50 watts at the very, very top end, and... The device itself will integrate all of these different connections of 10 GBE and 1 GBE into either one network or several networks internally, but I'll get to that later on. Let's take a look at the box. Enormous, boring, brown box. Fairly standard. Let's face it, most of your IT peripherals, particularly high-end enterprise business, arrive in big, dull brown boxes like this, and level one don't seem to be any different. Inside... We have a bag of accessories. Let's take a little look. What do we get? What do we get? We have our first start quick start installation guide. So that's what you need to sort of set it up for the first time. It is quite long, quite dull. Um, but let's face it, it is a network switch. And whoever's watching this, you're probably three kinds of person. Number one, you're someone that's looking to upgrade your existing home network setup to something with a little bit more oomph. Maybe work from home. Two, you're the buyer for your company that you've just been handed um, a payment you have to make and you're like what the hell is this it's a grand and then you looked it up to what it is hello thanks for coming or third you are a high-end IT professional that's looking for the right solution for a new IT deployment and you're wondering about this is compatibility you're definitely one of those three people if you're not one of those three people what the hell are you watching this for um, so regardless of that almost none of you are going to use that quick start installation guide and I recommend you go to their own website which is a little dated but has all the information you need. There's also information on your warranty there, all detailed inside about the utilization of the first time and how much of that warranty covers you worldwide. More information in the description below. Uh, we have a driver there 
for the um, software that this device runs on because this is a managed switch and they say it arrives with DMS. So they say device management system. But in other words, it's just a user interface, graphical user interface. We will do a separate software overview for that just to give you some idea how that looks. Is it quite user friendly? Does it have a nice GUI, graphical user interface? Or is it gonna be hideous and technical and painful? We shall see. Um, so moving forward. UK installation cable, and again, you're going to need a mains cable. This has got the PSU internal. There isn't an external power brick for this device. Also, we have a, um, I'm going to say COM cable. I'm not going to say VGA. This is the cable that you're going to need to connect this to see the kind of config back in. Maybe you've got an, um, an already um, kind of control system in your office environment and you need to connect this to it so it can all be controlled via a central, um, a central management system. That's where you're gonna need that comms cable into the comms port on this device. Also, we have rack hinges because this device can be installed inside a rack cabinet. It is only half or even quarter depth, but it has got the width to go into a standard one U slot on a rack cabinet. Move that out of there. And there's your lot. That's the contents of the box. Let's move that and get rid of it. Going a little further, we can take a look about what is included inside here, because I think we've just got the unit itself. Let's remove all this awful sellotape. Trying not to wreck the damn thing. Have a look. One down, one to go. And there we have our switch. There's that comms port there on the rear that we just talked about there. It's got a little cap on it, never seen that before. Um, and given the ventilation on the side of this device, and indeed on the other side of this device, we can see that it has active airflow. This has got a fan inside, which, I mean, let's face it, it is an enterprise level switch that should be in a rack cabinet. You shouldn't be in close proximity to this device, but you're definitely not going to want to, given it's probably gonna make quite a lot of noise whilst in operation. Something we'll find out during the software overview. Now, if we take a look, as mentioned, we've got the uh, PSU fans there on the side. We've got that power supply port there on the rear. And if we look at the front of the device, we can see first and foremost, lots of information about what the device can do and how it describes itself as, and I quote, an 28 port L3 Lite managed gigabit PoE switch, 24 PoE ports, 185 watts, four SFP, 10 gigabit ethernet ports. Basically what I've told you. Um, on the front of the device, we have individual LEDs for those ports, as well as system um, link activity, so port activity as well, as well as speed and which ports are activated together and PoE um, activation. Now, if, while before we go back to the device, let's talk a little bit about the capabilities of this device. Unsurprisingly, as it's managed, it will support all of the things you expect in, in terms of protection from DDoS, in terms of uh, having quality of service to make sure certain ports have priority. Link aggregation and port trunking are supported on this to a degree. It's worth highlighting. We'll mention that more in the software overview, as well as a huge array of support for virtual LANs. Virtual LANs are the ability to create multiple networks within a single network device looking at my notes here off screen, uh, off screen we've got standard virtual uh, land area network uh, set up within the software but we've got port based virtual uh, networks as well which is quite cool so it's a physical selection of ports we have got um, with regards to poe we can talk about how the poe control on this isn't just autonomous uh, autonomous where it's just going to supply power you can s select schedules for the poe support you can dedicate some of the poe and the ports to um audio devices so if you're using poe speakers you can create a separate virtual lan that's dedicated just to voip and phone within this device and the poe can be set to a schedule and you can set priority to some of the ports of that poe service to make sure that certain devices like phones won't power down even if there's a huge draw from the system coming across all the ports you can make sure that some ports will never lose poe activity now things like a dhcp and static routing are all possible on this because it is as mentioned an l3 light switch and on top of that you of course have got the support 
of both fiber and copper activity. What that means in real terms is you have got those 24 individual 1 gigabit Ethernet ports, all of which supplying PoE support, although it's worth highlighting that, again, this is PoE, not PoE+. Plus. So there isn't dedicated ports for higher power output for some of those larger, more enterprise level IP cameras. But on top of that, moving forward, we can move into the SFP, the fiber portion of things down here. And this is for connecting 10 gigabit Ethernet devices. So whether that is a 10 GBE related NAS, so you can make sure that all your devices backing up via multiple LAN ports are all being sent to a 10 gigabit NAS device, fantastic, some sort of server, a SAN, uh, all are possible within a device like this. And it's kind of bits like that that really make that £1,000 maximum price tag kind of understandable. The device has got 128 um, gigabit potential switch bandwidth to play with and uh, a, a purported 95.23 maximum packets per second or as they say, million packets per second. Everyone argues about that terminology. I'll never quite understand why. It kind of amounts to the same in the grand scheme of things. But with those virtual land area networks, all of the security precautions and tailored alert systems built into the software that we'll overview later on, you can see why this wants to fight with the big boys at Cisco at the very top end. Now, hold off your judgment until we do the software overview where we're going to be going into the software of this device on a separate network just to see what the configuration options are and whether they're the sort of thing that your business is going to take advantage of. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do click like if you have and click subscribe to learn more about all the devices to do with networking that we're going to talk about in 2020. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Visit the NAS Compare link in the description and I will see you next time.